boxing has always been a corrupt sport. No matter what, there's always some problems. There's also a lot of behind the scenes shit that occur, especially back in the day with these secret fights and all these exhibitions that these fighters had. Fear knuckle fights behind the scene. So many of these fighters got involved in different forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat so they could earn more income. And it still wasn't enough because most of these fighters ended up broke. Some of them ended up crazy. I look back in the past sometimes and the lifestyle that these guys led, man, this should have been a big movie about the shit by now. You don't need no action heroes when you have fighters like this who went through some of the hurdles that these guys went through. I came across an interesting story and I dug and I found the article. The article appeared in the Brooklyn Daily Eagle on December 11th, 1921. The secret fight that occurred between Jack Johnson and Jack Dempsey was also covered in the 1985 edition of the boxing magazine, Fight Beat. The fight is reported to have occurred in the presence of a private audience. Due to safety measures, this fight was kept private as Johnson's fights was known to be followed up by protests and lynchings. The fight was said to be an explosive affair between two legendary fighters. We're going to read the article that appeared in the Brooklyn newspaper. The paper's called the Brooklyn Daily Eagle this story appeared in the Brooklyn Daily Eagle December 11th, 1921. That was a Sunday, which leads me to believe that the fight probably occurred on December 10th, 1921. Now I've found plenty of record of Dempsey being asked about this fight. In fact, he was asked about it time and time again over the years. I was not able to find anything on Jack Johnson being asked about this fight. The only thing I could find was that Jack Johnson refused to talk about it due to the fact that he was already having a lot of money problems. He didn't want anybody coming in trying to pull some shit and asking for taxes or anything like that, even though this fight occurred in Canada. Now, Jack Dempsey has been asked about this fight several times. He never denied the fight ever happening. In fact, he hinted that the fight did happen on more than one occasion. We're gonna go into some of that. Regardless, the fight was reported in the newspaper only because the result favored Dempsey. There's also reports that Johnson stopped pushing for a Dempsey fight around that time period. Let's go into the article and then we will further discuss the fight that may have occurred between the 26 year old current heavyweight champion in 1921, a prime Jack Dempsey and the 43 year old former heavyweight champion of the world, Jack Johnson, who had just served time in prison for violating the Mann Act. Johnson had also been inactive for some time. Ray Pearson was the person that wrote the story that appeared in the Brooklyn newspaper. Pearson writes, as early as the second, Dempsey's adherents were standing on their toes, white faced and fearful as they saw Johnson snapping left jabs to Dempsey's nose and mouth. Then with the speed of a machine gun fire ripping over right crosses, which landed squarely on the jaw of the Utah Mauler, they saw something happen to Dempsey that never happened before. A punch intoxicated Dempsey reeling and staggering and trying to protect himself from the Negro's punishing blows. Johnson's right crosses befuddled Dempsey and he could not fight in his usual style. He took more punishment in the third round and more in the fourth and was still on the receiving end of punches in the fifth session. One of Johnson's rights cracked Dempsey in the fifth round and the Utah Mauler dropped to the canvas. He staggered to his feet at five and was still taking it when the gong ended that tough session for him. Dempsey seemed a rejuvenated man when the going started them into action in the sixth. No longer did Dempsey permit the black man to take the lead. When Johnson missed his unerring left jab, the white man got inside, left, right, left, went to Dempsey's fists to Johnson's midsection. Those crushing blows by Dempsey, who now could not be denied, almost doubled up Johnson. The tide had turned and the Dempsey followers scented victory for their man. 
Then came the seventh round and the finish. Once more, the swaying dash and Dempsey came catapulting out of his corner. He clashed with the Negro in the center of the ring. When he landed the deadly wallops to the body, Johnson was forced to clinch. The round was about two and a half minutes old when Dempsey shot a right which landed over the Negro's heart. That blow sickened Johnson and he tried to protect himself. He dropped his guard and overwent the knockout punch, a terrific right hook on Johnson's jaw. All right, so that's what they wrote back then. Whenever I read old newspaper articles, like some of the style of writing is just different than they do it today. There are some things that are said too in these newspapers that you just have to use your common sense to understand what they were probably talking about. But um, anyways, that's how it read. Um, you hear them referring to Jack Johnson as a Negro, and that's the way they did it back then. Now, let's look at the tail of the tape, okay? I'm not sure that this fight happened. There's just not enough information to lead me to believe that this fight did take place, but there are some people online that swear that this fight took place. Anyways, let's look at the tail of the tape. Johnson was 43 years old. Dempsey was 26. Just earlier that year, Dempsey had competed in the first million dollar gate. The first million dollar gate in boxing history. At Boyle's 30 Acres, Jersey City, New Jersey, July 2nd, 1921. Scheduled for 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Champion Jack Dempsey, challenger George Carpentier. And down goes Carpentier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's up just in time. And Dempsey goes after him, and down he is again. Two, three, four, five, six. He's trying to get up. Eight, nine, ten, and out. And Jack Dempsey remains heavyweight champion of the world. On July 2nd of 1921, Dempsey defended his title against World War I hero, George Carpentier. George Carpentier, he was from France. At the time the fight was signed, it was being presented as the fight of the century. Dempsey was not only the heavyweight champion of the world, he was the money fighter of that time period. After he started getting these big purses, Dempsey's activity level went down. So here's an example of a fighter who was living the life way back in the 1920s, the legendary Jack Dempsey. You'll see some big gaps in his career if you go back and look at his record. This guy would take long layoffs, man. He pretty much became an inactive champion throughout the 20s. This was due to him being highly endorsed. He was also now appearing in movies and getting paid well to participate in exhibitions. In 1921, at the beginning of Dempsey's first break, it is very possible that he took the money from some very wealthy men to face Jack Johnson in Canada. Johnson had won the heavyweight title 13 years earlier in the year of 1908. Johnson was 30 years old by the time Tommy Burns would stop avoiding him. He remained champion until 1915, having one of the most interesting reigns in boxing history. In 1913, Johnson fled the country for violating the Mann Act. Johnson openly dated white women during a time period when this would be considered a death sentence. He did not hide this and would be seen in public with white women. He did this half a century before the beating and death of Emmett Till. In the future, I will cover Johnson's career in the upcoming series, Moments with Jack Johnson. Johnson went on a nine fight winning streak after losing to Willard. These fights were held out of the country due to the fact that Johnson had fled the country. Johnson would not get another title shot. Money was short and Johnson had began participating in seller fighting. This is where fighters take place in bouts that are unadvertised. These bouts are fought for private audience, usually in cellars or other kind of um, low key places. Jack Johnson was already well past his prime and having to still participate in these damn seller fights. 
Just recently, discussion on fighters participating in exhibitions and getting paid by wealthy businessmen. The topic came up again and was discussed when popular fighter Floyd Mayweather Jr. spoke on fighting exhibition matches in front of wealthy audiences. If it's happening now, you could only imagine what was going on back then when these guys didn't have the kind of money that fighters today have. They had to do this to make a living. In 1920, after seven years, Johnson finally surrendered to U.S. authorities. He would serve a one-year prison sentence in Leavenworth State Penitentiary. During the time he was incarcerated, Johnson fought exhibitions in prison. He was well respected by fellow inmates and staff. When he was released in 1921, he needed some money. He was now back in America and began to challenge the then current young heavyweight champion of the world, Jack Dempsey, publicly to a fight. Johnson could not get a license to fight in America for several years, even after serving his time. Besides, top boxing personalities of the times was hesitant when it came to making the fight. There was fear that such a fight could result in an extreme harsh outcome that may ignite race riots and lynchings. Since December 11, 1921 was a Sunday and this story was ran in the Sunday edition of the paper, I am assuming that the fight took place Saturday, December the 10th. By 1921, a fight between a black American and white American fighter on American soil had not occurred in years. And this was due mostly to um, a violent aftermath. If this fight did take place, keep in mind, there was a 17 year difference between Dempsey and Johnson. Dempsey may have won if the fight took place, but Johnson had gave him a good fight, according to this writer, and even had Dempsey hurt on more than one occasion, including a knockdown. If Johnson was 10 years younger, this fight could have been a different result, especially if Johnson was 17 years younger and equal in age to Dempsey. But this was a different era, man. This was not the early 1900s. Shit, this was in the 1910s. This was the 1920s. Johnson's best years was far behind him. There was also a black fighter on the rise that was closer in age to Dempsey. His name was Harry Wills. The public placed pressure on Dempsey to come back and fight Harry Wills. One of the excuses not to fight Wills was that they feared riots may take place following the fight. Team Dempsey knew that if Dempsey took the Johnson fight publicly, then Dempsey would face more pressure to fight Wills. Boxing historians, they argue about if Dempsey really ducked Wills. I've heard arguments on that before. Johnson himself was trying to set up a fight with Wills. They were beginning to negotiate when the commission vetoed the fight. Dempsey was living the good life and was married to an actress in 1925, a popular Hollywood actress. As he was a newly married man, Dempsey embraced the celebrity lifestyle. He liked the party and all of that stuff. He continued to take time off of boxing. By the time he came back to boxing towards the end of 1926, he had not had a fight in over three years. He was facing the Irish American and former US Marine, Gene Tunney. Tunney was an excellent boxer and came into the ring sporting the record of 76-1-4, according to Box Rec. His only loss was a decision loss, facing the legendary Harry Greb. Tunney would avenge that loss and would go on to fight Greb five times, defeating Greb three times, losing to him once, and one of their fights ended in a draw. Tunney had twice held the American light heavyweight title. Tunney had fought six times in the year of 1925 alone. He was an active fighter that stayed sharp. He would defeat Dempsey by way of unanimous decision. We will go into the stages of Dempsey's career more on an upcoming documentary, Jack Dempsey in retrospect. There are people close to Dempsey that said the fight took place. In the early 1980s, right before Dempsey passed away, a boxing writer showed him the clips and asked him if the fight really did happen. Dempsey smiled and replied, I always said I could beat Johnson. Boxing Illustrated reached out to Dempsey in the early 1980s 
when Dempsey was in his 80s and asked Dempsey if they could do a story on the fight between him and Jack Johnson. Dempsey hinted that he would be willing to give them the story, but that he would prefer to be gone to his grave before the story would be printed. Some say Dempsey didn't want to speak on it due to being 17 years younger and taking a beating by Johnson throughout the fight. I also heard some controversy in regards to how the article was presented to the public. What leads me to be skeptical is that there is hardly no record of Johnson being asked about the secret fight, though Johnson mentioned Dempsey on several occasions. If I had to guess, man, summing this whole thing up, I really don't think the fight took place because I just can't see how Dempsey or Johnson could hold that fight a secret because both of them lived to be pretty old. They never said nothing much about it. There's hardly nothing of Johnson speaking on this fight. Though he's mentioned Dempsey, like I said, several times. I would expect to hear the story of Dempsey ducking him too. I do know that he did call Dempsey out when he was released from prison. There is record of that, but it did stop in the 1920s. I know that Jack Johnson had gotten older. He wanted to fight him at first. They screwed him around with the license for years. They waited until he got old to where he didn't have a chance to win that heavyweight title back. They waited till he was too old before they granted him the license. If the fight took place, it's possible. Maybe it took place at a different date. I have heard people say also that there was a secret fight, but I heard from other historians that the fight happened before Dempsey became heavyweight champion. There, that's possible too. Now, if the fight did happen before Dempsey became heavyweight champion, then why did Jack Johnson not mention this when he was campaigning for that fight in 1920, 1921? I don't really see too much record of Johnson asking for the fight anytime after that, you know, 1920, 21 period. And if he did ask for the fight, say in 25 or 26, if I could find something that, that shows Jack Johnson asking for the fight, you know, later on in the 20s to the mid to late 20s, then I would say that, hey, it's possible that the fight probably didn't take place. I can't find it though. Dempsey retired in 1927. Jack Johnson, on the other hand, a fighter who started fighting in the late 1800s, continued to fight in the 1930s. I'm not sure if this fight took place or not. I think that if they met at a time where Jack Johnson was in his 40s, Dempsey definitely had a better chance to win that fight. But let's say they met prime for prime. Not in 1921. Let's say Dempsey fought the Jack Johnson from 1905, 1908, that time period. How do you guys think that that fight would have went? And if you want, you could also tell me how you think the fight would have went if the fight did occur in 1921 when Jack Johnson was 17 years older than Dempsey at the age of 43 and Dempsey only being 26 years old. It's Negroes on weekends, every weekend. Back in 1909, he, you wouldn't, they would send him letters saying, you fighting a white man and nigger, if you knock him out, we'll kill you. He said, just kill my black buggers, I'm gonna knock this white man cold. <laughs> and he would knock the white man out, and the crew got clan would be burning them. They killed Negroes all over the country. When Jack Johnson wanted to fight, they had riots all over South America. It was so serious, and Jack Johnson, he's bad. He had to be a bad, bad black man. Wasn't no black Muslims to defend him. Wasn't no NACP in 1909. Wasn't no Rap Brown. Wasn't no Move. All these black groups. Wasn't no Andrew Davis, no Hill Newton, no Malcolm X. He was by himself. Jack Johnson. It was so long ago, people still had log cabins in this country. And there were no horses and wagons and stagecoaches to fight. He was one black man in the midst of all the rednecks would kill lynch Negroes every day. He was saying, he was dress up in pretty suits. Negroes are allowed to dress up in days. He put on pretty white neckties and pretty white, and had white women. You know that nigga was bold. He married white women. You would get lynched for looking at a white woman in them days. That man married white women and walked around, took pictures with his white women. Married two of them, and 
they run him out of the country because a white woman, he left the whole country and fought out of Cuba. He was bad. Back in 1909, man. Man, you know, Jack Johnson was the greatest. He had to be the greatest. There wasn't no Black Panthers, wasn't no bodyguards, white people, lynching niggas, wasn't no television, wasn't no telephone. And that nigga was doing all this stuff in them days. He was bad when you think about it. I know I'm bad, but he was crazy. <laughs>